I think I grabbed Andy and I was like, that's her before her face was on screen. I think they had like a shot like behind her or something. And I heard her voice and I knew it was her instantly. <laughs> and I was like, that's her. I don't want to spoil things for people who who still want to see it. Because I, I had a few things sort of spoiled for me. Uh, not really spoiled like people kept sending me things and people which is understandable and I saw things with the soundtrack so like I knew certain things and I wasn't happy about that so <laughs> if you are avoiding spoilers that's totally fine here was my whole thought process about the reimagining which I'm calling it a reimagining because I don't think it can officially be called a remake that's not like a read or anything. I think for the most part, like some of them can be considered reimaginings and some of them can be considered remakes. Like for instance, I would say Beauty and the Beast, remake. Aladdin for the most part, remake. Maleficent, reimagining. I think The Little Mermaid is more of a reimagining. And I'll, I'll explain why. There's a few things that I absolutely loved. There's a few things that I absolutely hate. And there's a few things that I think are not up for debate. <laughs> and I think y'all are very interested in my thoughts on what's not up for debate. <laughs> Halle Bailey was the best part of the movie. I, I was very concerned when she, when like the casting for her was announced because Anyone who is cast as Ariel, that is like not Jodie Benson, is terrifying to me, just like by nature. I had done my own research because I didn't know who she was. I listened to, I'm, I'm gonna say it wrong. I, I don't know the order. I think Chloe is older, so I think it's Chloe X Halley. I listened to Chloe X Halley, which is her like music endeavor with her sister. And I was able to pick out which one was Hallie. I was able to tell without like seeing, I just listened on like Spotify or whatever. I was able to tell who was Chloe and who was Hallie. And from that alone, I thought that she was the choice for Ariel. I thought that she was a very good choice. I didn't know if she could do it because part of your world is very hard to sing, in my opinion. When they released that footage in D23, I, I cried. <laughs> I was like, Oh, she's going to be good. And she was incredible. I thought that she was fantastic. For the most part, I also loved Prince Eric. Flounder was also good, but I also am biased because I love Jonah Howard King as, um, as Luca. Triton was miscast. <laughs> Triton was miscast. Scuttle was miscast. I understand why they changed the, uh, bird species i guess for scuttle i don't think aquafina was right for the role as you know i haven't really liked any of the live action remakes and i generally feel like it's a cash grab especially when it's basically a shot for shot remake lion king went into the little mermaid cautiously optimistic but i really loved it there were parts i would have cut most of the edit songs but i cried twice and kind of want to go see it again i would like to see it again too i did not cry i want to know where you cried at which you don't have to say in chat. Triton was fine. That's not how you spell Triton. <laughs> Scuttle was fine. Meh to both. I don't think either of them were fine. I think they performed abysmally. I I am not a big fan of uh, whoever the actor is for Triton in general, but I felt like he... There was just a disconnect there. I feel like he didn't know what he was doing. It felt as if he had never actually seen the movie. <laughs> Oh, the bow down. Yeah. Kenneth Mars did a really good job as Triton and had done something that felt king like and strict, like overbearing father that was lost in, in this part. I cried during part of your world. I cried the first time I saw that. So that makes sense. I didn't cry this time, I think, because I was just so overwhelmed in general. That performance was immaculate and a wonderful job at honoring the original without trying to make a carbon copy. Like that's the thing that's not up for debate for me is that Hallie, Hallie was Ariel. Hallie did such a good job. Good's not the right word. It's, it's, it's not good enough. Like it's, it, it, she did such a good job, like in everything, in her acting, in her like delivery, 
in her singing. It was just wonderful. And then I cried at the end when the mermaids and humans were together. That was mostly because of the original story and the queer subtext more than something Disney did with the ending. I didn't cry as much with that. Well, I didn't cry in general, but I, I didn't. Okay, so let's get in. Let's get into the meat of it. I also think that Melissa McCarthy did a good job. I think she she brought something different to the role than Pat Carroll, but she didn't do what a lot of the Broadway actresses for Ursula have done. I liked that she didn't try to emulate Pat Carroll, but she did something different while still being. Ursula. And I thought that she did an incredible job as Ursula, even though I thought it was a little too campy at points. They they had said in an interview, Melissa and I think Javier Bardem, that Melissa had like kind of ad-libbed that, look at a stupid feed or whatever, as um, she becomes human and like swims to the surface. They kept that in. And I feel like a lot of those like ad-libs that she sort of did, it didn't feel as... Ursula to me, some of them, not all of them, they felt more Melissa, which is fine. But as somebody who's like so integrated into the story of The Little Mermaid, that took me out of it. I'm not saying that, that it was not good for this movie. I'm just saying as somebody who is like so thoroughly like ingrained in The Little Mermaid, it was so unexpected that it took me out of it. I think people who are not as invested in the story of Little Mermaid would love it. I feel like she did. I feel like she did a really good job. Too campy, the limit does not exist. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, I expect most audiences will really like her performance and will like a lot of those lines, but like it was unexpected for me. Like for instance, um, when Ariel's grotto essentially like gets destroyed by Triton, I was not expecting the introduction to Ursula to go the way that it did because it's not done that way in the animation. I did not like that they changed a lot of things that I don't think necessarily needed to be changed. I feel like they changed a lot to distinguish themselves from the original and to distinguish themselves from the Broadway show. And I think they did that for various reasons. But I feel like they spent a lot of time thinking about what could get cut. And realistically, I think some of the cuts that they did made sense in the context of their film. But some of them didn't, it didn't make sense to me. Like some things were done for a story driven idea that they had that I think fell short. Didn't the animated movie imply that Ursula and Triton had a history? Maybe that was the Disney Channel series. Um, I don't know if I've seen all of the Little Mermaid TV show, but in the animated films, Ursula and Triton are not siblings. In this, they are. And I think technically in the Hans Christian Andersen story, I think they are. Because the, the animated film is not like a word for word, like remake of that. It's like Disney's own take on it. I, I didn't like the Queen. The storyline that they had for that was that Eric was essentially like adopted by the king and queen of that kingdom. Whereas in the animated film, Eric is essentially like alone and Grimsby is kind of his caretaker. In this, his parents are mentioned kind of explicitly and the king is no longer part of the picture, but the queen still is alive and she sort of has a little bit of a hatred for like the sea gods. She knows about the sea gods. Like she doesn't know like Triton, but it's like lore, which I think is like, okay, I get that. But their whole thing is that they're like, like fishermen, like, like that's their whole thing. <laughs> Like that's, that's the kingdom. Uh, it, it wasn't driving the story in the way that I think they intended. I think that they intended it to be like, well, they have this healthy fear of the sea gods. So therefore whatever, like it, it just felt a little too carbon copy of Triton. Based on my feelings of the animated film, it, it doesn't fit in with Eric's 
backstory. I kind of like that adjustment. It created a nice mirror in Eric Ariel's experiences with her parents. I think that most people would probably be okay with that. But for me, it felt like they were changing too much of Eric's backstory. I feel like they had that tension between Eric wanting to discover like more of the ocean, which he was already doing. His mom, like the queen, like not really being okay with that. But that's kind of what they're supposed to do. Like he might not necessarily need to do it, but then why does she have him like doing it for the most part in general? Like he's on the ship with Grimsby, like Grimsby probably wouldn't have been on the ship. It didn't make sense to me. Also like they were celebrating Eric's birthday on the ship, but they did nothing for his birthday. And then like a day or so later, then they celebrated his birthday with the statue and the fireworks. <laughs> I feel like there there were continu continuity errors. I get that in my not the Little Mermaid brain. Eric didn't have much backstory, so I really appreciated the expansion of his world and motivations. I think most audience members would probably feel that way. They also changed the sisters. The sisters were not the same sisters, like Athena, like Athena, like all well, not Athena. Athena's the mom. They're not in this. They're renamed to be more like the Seven Seas, which, like, I get. I don't think was necessary because it kind of made, for me, more questions. Do they have as much of, like, a familiar, familial relationship? Like, are they as close as sisters? It kind of felt like they were trying to imply that they were, but it wouldn't make sense because the seas are so far away like it it just didn't feel as necessary the sisters all had a little bit of like triton's hatred towards humans whereas i don't know that they would have based on the animated series like the sisters aren't in the movie at quite as much they are in like the prequel and everything but they're supportive of Ariel in love. They don't know that it's with a human. I feel like they would be more sheltered and less angry, if that makes sense. Yeah, that didn't feel necessary, but I got the reasoning. It sounded like they weren't normally there. But then they kind of implied that they were and that they, they all like grew up together. But then who was helming the seas before that? Like it, it didn't quite make sense. Also, like, they kept in the line about Ursula at the end, like, ruling all of the oceans. Triton rules all of the oceans, not the sisters. So, like, it, it kind of implied that, like, they were ruling the oceans instead of just, like, maybe, like, overseeing the ocean. Like, I don't know. It, it, I felt like there was, <laughs> unlike in some of the other live action versions that sort of, like, got rid of plot holes. I feel like this kind of added more plot holes, in my opinion. They also changed a few things that I thought were a little unforgivable. For instance, at the end, Triton comes to the conclusion that Ariel really does love Eric and she should be with him and she should be human. And Triton gives her her legs. But the whole thing with that is... In the animated film, he gives her her legs and this beautiful, elegant, royal dress. And in this version, Eric sort of kind of gives up on Ariel at some point and drops her like kind of tattered dress, the blue dress, into the ocean. So like that's gone now. And then when she gets her human legs at the end, She's back in that dress. She's not in this new dress that is fairly significant. It's not, it's not in this one. So I don't know, that felt very, it felt very weird to me. I took it as Triton ruled the seven seas and the sisters were like reporting into him and focusing more on their own local seas. Yeah, that's what I kind of felt, but it, I don't know, it didn't quite work. Perhaps it is more like feudalism. They rule the seas as vassals of Triton. Yeah, I think that was the intention, but I felt like it it didn't quite fit in with the lore of the like original animation. 
thoughts on making her voice an explicit part of her mermaid powers. I think that's implied in the animated film. As somebody who's like big on it, I feel like it's I feel like it's implied in the animated film. It's way more explicit here. Now here's where I have a huge issue with it. <laughs> so Ariel loses her voice to Ursula, who has it in the locket. Now Ursula has full control of that voice. And when Ursula becomes Vanessa and has the intention of marrying Eric, Vanessa has Ariel's voice. Vanessa, as a human, uses Ariel's voice. And she loses her voice once the locket is broken and shattered and the voice returns to Ariel. And her voice goes back to Ursula's voice. And in this version, Vanessa was kind of just this other girl. Like, you, if you didn't really know, I think you could potentially miss the fact that it's Ursula in disguise and then be like, oh, okay, it is Ursula. Like, until the point where it's explicitly stated that it is Ursula. But she's she she's got her own voice. So there's a third voice in there, um, needlessly. Um, and I think that that was probably because, like, the that actress, like would have just been her image <laughs> but it it didn't fit in i think they i think they needed to dub her lines like hallie should have delivered them um because in the animated film a lot of people don't realize that vanessa is voiced by jody benson because <laughs> it makes sense the only time that where you hear ursula's voice as vanessa is vanessa is when she's looking in the mirror um, and that's to like drive home the point. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, but Pat Carroll actually taught Jody Benson how to laugh as Pat Carroll. <laughs> and Jody Benson did a really good job. Props to Jody for that. There was a whole bunch of other things that I felt like didn't quite make sense. Like for instance, uh, Under the Sea, they don't play the instruments, which like I understand why they didn't do it in the live action. But also they had Ariel sing in it. And Ariel, for the most part in Under the Sea, is wholly uninterested. Sebastian is performing that song to sort of persuade Ariel to give up on life above the sea. She's not about that life. <laughs> So it's kind of lost on her. Yeah, she's enjoying it for the most part. Like you see her like do this and like the, the things are around her. But kind of by the halfway point, she's no longer interested. And I would say like three quarters of the way through, she's already gone. She's left. And here she didn't leave until like the last note. I don't know. Yeah, I miss a lot of the fun of Under the Sea, but that would have been full camp to have them playing instruments in a live action. Yeah. They also fully got rid of Chef Louis. Chef Louis was not in the film at all, which I think was okay, but it didn't quite fit in with the rest of the changes because there was a lot that was missing with Sebastian. And I feel like they kind of tried to use Scuttle as that conflict. Uh, and it, it just kind of fell short. Also... The Jamaican accent was awful. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, Sebastian in general, I thought was funny. I thought it was cute. The accent was not great. I was fine with that removal, though I would have been fine without that Scuttle song getting Chef Louis instead. Yes. I thought Aquafina and Triton did a horrible job. The song was very Lin-Manuel and did not fit. It was very, it didn't, it didn't fit in. A lot of the songs that they removed so that they could add in their own songs, I think they cut things that needed to stay in. Howard Ashman was the lyricist, but produced it and uh, put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into The Little Mermaid. Like, Ariel is Ariel because of Howard Ashman. And 
the songs were used to like push the story along and everything was very like methodically planned. So a lot of the changes that were made didn't have that same hardcore planning in. And then because of that, there were, I thought really bad pacing issues and story issues where like things didn't quite feel as real to me. And because of that, I felt like this reimagining did not have the magic of the original. It's still an enjoyable film. I thought most people would enjoy it, but it lacked that magic that the original had. And even though it was dedicated to Howard, I don't know that he would have enjoyed it. <laughs> Which was my whole basis for how I would enjoy the film. Would Howard like it? And I, I don't know that he would have loved it. Was Eric's little song from the musical that felt underwhelming? No, I checked with Dare Bear and um, I don't think they used any of the music from the musical, which is okay. Uh, they do need to make their own song so that like they can be up for awards and everything like that. And I thought Eric's song was good. Um, the new song they gave Ariel was good. They weren't great. The ones in the musical that do the same thing were way better, in my opinion, including the one for Scuttle. Scuttle has a song in the musical that I think is way better than the one that did not fit in this one. Last thing I gotta say, I think they did an amazing job developing the relationship between Ariel and Eric. The scenes between the two of them were wonderful. It made me care about their relationship way more than I did before. I liked how they handled their relationship. I think they did a really good job with all of the additions and all of the interactions between the two of them. The only thing that I didn't like, that I think most people would not agree with me on, but I really don't care, is at the end, um, when the big fight between Ariel, Eric, and Ursula is happening, Ariel has more of a heroine moment. And she is the one who drives the ship into Ursula. And that is opposite. They made Eric very like damsel in distress and they made Ariel the one who was doing like more of the fighting, which I understand why they did it. But in the context of the original, I feel like it didn't perform as well because you lost Eric showing that he has that same love and fearlessness and like he's willing to like die for her too and he's also willing to fight for Triton so he's the one who did it and Ariel has that sort of damsel in distress thing where she's on the bottom of the whirlpool and as a mermaid is struggling to stay alive against Ursula. And that is the only moment where Eric has that sort of like hero idea. And I think that's necessary for Eric's story because it's really the only point when he does what he's meant to do. Whereas Ariel did most of everything that she could and needed to do before and after that moment. They also had a really touching scene between Ariel and Triton at the end. Again, Triton's acting was not good. Here's the thing that really annoyed me is Ursula's garden, which you should be familiar with as all poor unfortunate souls. Um, whenever Ursula either like goes back on her contract or the the people in the contract, like they can't pay, they become into the, like this little like whatever and they're in her garden eternally. And in the animated classic, I feel like most people don't realize this point is one of them, only one of them has the bravery to essentially like stand up to Ursula in a very minimal way because they're 
seaweed essentially and grabs onto Ariel's arm as she's entering. And Ariel is horrified because she doesn't know what it is. She's just like scared of it. And they're trying to warn her. They're trying to prevent her from going inside and doing this. And in the new version, there's like skeletons of mermaids and potentially humans and the garden creatures. And it's explicitly stated as Ursula's garden, but it's kind of implied that like it was there before. They all kind of attack Ariel and it, it loses the same thing. I feel like whoever like did that part didn't quite understand what was significant about that part. And then without spoiling anything, that version of like Triton, when he uh, does the trade with Ariel, it was handled differently. I don't know if that was necessary. I think they did it so it would be a bigger thing. And I felt like it, it fell short for me. I love that battle and that Ariel did a lot more since she would have been more world versed in ocean combat and understanding sea people. But I think they did a good job showing that Eric still cared and tried when he swam down with the harpoon. He does the harpoon in the animated film. He does that. Ariel yanks on Ursula and she kills Flotsam and Jetsam. But then Ariel is kind of the only point when she's in trouble in my opinion. And she's like the damsel in distress. They got rid of that. And Eric was kind of like the damsel in distress. And I know why they did that, but I don't know if it was as necessary because I feel like pivotal points of the story were lost. I do think that most people don't see that because they probably haven't watched Little Mermaid like six billion times like I have. At the end, I got really annoyed because Max after Eric literally just threw the stick once, Max comes and brings the, the stick over and Eric goes, again? <laughs> and it's like, Max is like your companion. Like, <laughs> I don't know, I got really annoyed. It's hard to get a good actor for stern but kind father figures. Yeah, that whole exchange fell short. I think my biggest issue with Triton though is that and it could have just been like the voice itself. Like Kenneth Mars had like such a distinguished voice. Triton, this film is like, you went to the above world. And like, that's not <laughs> like, for instance, this is Kenneth Mars. I set certain rules and I expect those rules to be obeyed. Like, do you know what I mean? It, it like it. Yeah, he had power behind his voice. And this guy was just like, you into the above world. And I was like, really? <laughs> also, he wasn't shirtless and he specifically asked not to be shirtless. I was expecting originally that Jodie Benson would be cast as Carlotta, but she still had a really cute uh, part. And I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really cute. The friends that we were seeing did not know that that was Jodie Benson, that that was the original voice of Ariel. And it was so funny because I think I grabbed Andy and I was like, that's her before her face was on screen. I think they had like a shot like behind her or something. And I heard her voice and I knew it was her instantly. <laughs> and I was like, that's her. They changed Carlotta. I feel like the actress that they had for Carlotta was fantastic. They also added in other characters that I don't know that that part fit. It kind of seemed like they just made roles for people. They also gave her more of a role, I guess, for lack of a better word, than like what Carlotta was. Carlotta was kind of just like an old maid. So I think that they did a good job there. They also did a really good job in general with like making the cast all across the board more diverse. I thought they did a really good job there. Another thing that I was kind of sad about was that Flotsam and Jetsam didn't have voices which I think didn't quite make sense because like the other creatures did. So they had Ursula kind of do a lot of it, which, okay. Also, they don't get married. They didn't get married at the end. It was kind of implied, but they didn't technically get married. Also, the, the wedding scene at the end, not Ariel and Eric's, the wedding of Vanessa and Eric, they're not getting married. He's proposing. There's like an event and he's going to propose to Vanessa and Ariel stops it. That's not how it is in the movie. They're they're getting married. And they also, Scuttle, Sebastian, and Flounder all get 
all of the animals, the birds, the fish, like everyone to assist in preventing it. And I feel like that would have been a nightmare. So I understand why they changed that. It could have still been on a boat and it could have still been a wedding, but for some reason they decided to change that. I disagree. There are so many ways to do things with CGI and I feel like movies like Avengers, they could have pulled off the swarm scene realistically. Maybe you're right. I think that they also cut things like Max bites Vanessa's butt and Vanessa kicks Max, which glad they didn't put that in. There's a lot going on. So I think it would have been potentially hard. And also I think if they had the money for both scenes, they would have kept it for Under the Sea. And I think they did keep it for Under the Sea, but I think that they should have changed Under the Sea like they weren't playing the instruments. I feel like that could have been done better. Here's another thing that kind of bothered me. A lot of people probably don't realize this. Um, I don't know like what the exact terms would be, but like Triton as the king, the person that he would like send out to like search for Ariel, everything like that, it's the seahorses. And there's a specific seahorse who is like kind of like the head honcho person. They kind of implied that Sebastian was that person. Sebastian's only the court composer. They just have a very good friendship. Sebastian, while not also like the babysitter of the girls, is also kind of that because he is teaching them to like sing and everything like that. And there wasn't the concert. It was it was also like this big event, um, but it wasn't concert. And they kind of stripped Sebastian of his like court composer title because it it didn't fit in with where they were going. But with Under the Sea, it's kind of pivotal to that, so I don't know. It always bothered me in the original that Eric didn't even kiss Ariel, but jumped right into marriage with Vanessa. I always put it down to witchcraft, so I sort of like it that it is a proposal. So William, in the in the animation, Eric is under a spell. If you if you look closely at his eyes when he's telling Grimsby that like he wants to get married, like ASAP, Vanessa is holding the the necklace and like laughing and you see his eyes are not like his normal eyes he's like he's under a spell it's an enchantment and Grimsby is like what like he like he's very like, confused why but Eric is being very whatever because he's being controlled by Vanessa because he's using well, I mean, Vanessa is using Ariel's siren voice. But I also feel like they, they had to like change that and like not make it as sireny in the animated film because it was also like intended for children really and children wouldn't have really understood that. And also Ariel would not have controlled Eric in that way. Personally, I feel like the proposal instead of jumping right to a wedding would be much more likely to not raise as many red flags with the family. Yeah, that probably makes sense too. Y you have to remember though, like I'm so, I'm so obsessed. <laughs> so like when anything is changed or different, I zero in on it and I'm like, why? <laughs> One last thing, can you give us a score out of 10? As a reimagining, I would probably give it eight, eight and a half. As a remake, I would probably give it four, four and a half. I think most people would enjoy it. I think most hardcore Little Mermaid fans can experience it in a way that works for them. Kind of like how I feel about the Hocus Pocus 2 movie. It just didn't do what I wanted.